It's quite fitting that we celebrate here in Pennon, Rolf Forsyth's local hero, where it all started. It felt like emotional gloaming, remembering how special a movie it is. I would like to thank the local hero for the anniversary committee for tonight's event and Amanda Rogers of Cinetopia for helping to organise this event and the events in Banff and Protsoy. The movie has an enduring light with Perrin that has spanned the 40 years and sees to this very day thousands of fans visit this village every year to have their photograph taken at the red telephone box and to walk in the footsteps of the actors and supporting crews who created that masterpiece. I'd like to extend a very warm pen and welcome to Tam Dean Byrne, who played Roddy, Jimmy Yule, who played Ian, Jonathan Watson. Jonathan's easy to remember because he played Jonathan. And the pen and shopkeeper, Mrs. Mrs. Fraser, Sandra Vaux, is with us tonight. Just arrived. Uh, it's very special. Uh, just making another 40 years is probably very special, but uh, being here with uh, three great friends who uh, shared memories that uh, will always be in your mind. The last time I was here was when we made the movie. I've not been back here since. It felt like emotional gloaming. It's like just these tingles that I was getting all the time. I was just on the verge of tears so much, and that's, that's what's been rising more than just remembering how special a movie it is and just feeling so blessed to be part of it. <laughs> it feels great, it really does. It's, we've had a fantastic time. So many people that, that the film means that an awful lot too. Hello. A lot of the crew stayed in either uh, Banff or Fraserburgh, but we actually, myself, Tam Dean Byrne, Jimmy Yule, and an actor who's no longer with us, Charlie Kearney, we rented a cottage which was overlooking the, the Bay of Pennon. And being there last night and seeing it all was, it just brought back so many happy memories. It was fantastic. The village itself hadn't, I don't think for me, hadn't really changed all that much. It doesn't really feel like it's changed at all, but I mean, it was just, first we see in the cottage that we stayed in, which was just up on top of the cliff. Seeing that again was incredible. That incline down, it just like blows you away. The idea that all of this crew and all of that equipment was, uh, was taken down there, just like unbelievable. But it is such a special little place. Well, I, bu I bump into uh, Tam uh, fairly often because we, we both live in Glasgow. I haven't seen Jimmy for a few years uh, and I, had, I hadn't seen Sandra for since the rap party in here in 1982. So that's been really special. But they're lovely people and it's, uh, yeah, we've, we feel really privileged to be part of something like this weekend. So it's been great, yeah. I've got a loads of, of favorite memories. Uh, you know, Bill coming up to me and saying, give, give a beat after action and say, the minister says news travels fast. Could you treat our conversation with confidence for the meantime? Oh, I'll give you my word that I'll be as discreet as the next man, Mr. McIntyre. Thank you. But news does tend to travel fast around here. I understand, sir. The Reverend says news travels fast around here. Mm -hmm. My favourite memory is me and Jimmy watching Burt Lancaster arrive. Very first day. And Jimmy and I were in a caravan and we, we watched his Daimler approach and the man get out the, the car. And he seemed to go in forever. He was huge. Uh, this major Hollywood legend. So that is a really special moment, yeah. It's hard to say exactly how much I've been affected and touched by the whole experience. It's coming back here and going through the film shot by shot, literally, and, uh, and with my fellow actors, and just remembering these moments and the stuff that suddenly comes back to you. You think, oh, gosh, all about that. Lovely things, and, and having Peter Reigert coming on from uh, America and, uh, and Jennifer Black. It's so fantastic to see them again, looking so well. It's been great having people who 
understand the movie or, or appreciate it and uh, it means something to them after that, this length of time. It's fantastic. It's just been a really, a really hard to describe. I feel quite emotional about it. It's almost intangible about what is so wonderful about it. It's like it says in the book that it's stuff that happens in between. It's sort of in between anything that you can really get your hands on. It's, <laughs> yeah, it was very special. John Melville, author of the book, Local Hero, Making of a Scottish Classic, is also with us. Local Hero has long been one of my favourite films. I first started going to special events, celebrating the film maybe 15, 20 years ago, and uh, even got to interview Bill Forsyth in Mali. So when I realised a few years ago that it was going to be the 40th anniversary in 2023, I thought it was a perfect chance to to maybe write the definitive history of the movie. Channel 4 for QRK, come back to Nelstor. In the film, this is the road that leads to the beach with Ben Shack on it. In reality, there's nothing around there and the beach is about four hours that way on the other side of Scotland. What this road does lead to though is Mrs Fraser's shop. I do remember it very well, except that the little shop that Mrs Fraser ran uh, was, had gone back to being a house. Somebody lived in it, curtains at the window, flowers at the door and all that kind of thing. The apples and oranges, Roddy. a little kitten in the window, and Mrs Fraser comes running out and shouts, Roddy. Roddy, tell Gordon Urquhart, the Russians are coming. But I remembered very much coming out of the shop, running onto the courtyard as the, as the Russian boat arrived. The Russians are coming, the Russians are coming. This is where Victor arrives uh, on his dinghy and gets collected by Jonathan. In the early versions of the script, Victor was in the film a little bit more and there was a kind of mystery of who this Russian character was. The vulgar boatman is his call sign. He's chatting to Mrs. Uh, Fraser in the shop. So I think it's, it's probably good that the, the scenes were cut back a little bit because he's a bit more, more of a friendly character in the finished film and that mystery of who's watching the village is, is, is excised completely. I was his current girlfriend at the time, but I think he'd been through all the ladies in the village. But we didn't let that upset us, really. <laughs> so for the last 18 months or so, I've been interviewing cast and crew, I've been reading archive interviews and reading old versions of the script. And I'm basically just trying to pull together everything I can to piece together the ultimate history of Local Hero. Right, so we're... <laughs> it was great seeing lots of people down here. Even yeah. now, all these years later, um, we're inundated with local hero fans that just love to come down and have a look at the village and spend as much time as they can. So that's what made me think about starting Coastal Cuppy. Offer people a bit of northeast hospitality, a fine piece and a cup of tea. I was always surprised just how many folk came from abroad. Um, especially Germans. What is it about the film that has caused you to come all this way to see Pennant? Yeah. It had a big impact to me. Um, I did not learn so much in uh, 100 minutes as I learned in watching this movie when I was a young teenager. I myself come from a little village and um, it gives me the feeling that I live at the right place there. And not that I'm hidden, but it's the right place. Yeah. Everybody has their own take on it. There's so much richness in it that everybody has their favourite line or, or scene or it's like you get more and more from it. Everybody takes something different, individual. That's how they interpret it and that's a sign of a great piece of work, be it a painting or a piece of music or a film. It is from that script. It must be to begin with. I'm just saying, is it, is it, is it long enough? Oh, but... <laughs> no, not the wire, the cable. <laughs> 
cord could be a little longer, though. You know, in America, the cords are a bit longer. The cable, yeah. yeah sure. What's the news? The Russians are coming. The Russians. <laughs> you know, that it is, it's that script that then made everything else possible, finding the right place, but it all sort of comes out of that. <laughs> the minister says, news travels fast. News travels fast. News travels fast. Yes. Tell them. No. If the movie's over, you have got the feeling you know all of these people uh, very well, and you could um, drink a coffee or tea or something else with those people. You know, they are like, um, yeah, they are, they are friendly people, and they live here in this little hidden paradise, and that's nice. Yeah. yeah. It all sort of comes out of the, the mind and the heart of Bill Forsyth. What a guy. <laughs> he was so relaxed and so easy to be with, easy to talk to. Just, uh, just a lovely, lovely man, really lovely man. Lovely sense of humour. Yeah, and the two, two Gs and bugger off. You know that <laughs> bit, I love that bit, love that bit. Are you sure there are two L's in dollar, Gillian? Yes. And now there are two G's in bugger off. Excellent. Oh, so many good things.